Was released on 24th September 1932 and it ran non stop for 64 weeks at what was then the Chitra Sedan. The story of the legendary singer poet was a bold expression of social ideas, technical excellence, and lyricism. The phenomenal success of the Bengali Chandidas automatically led to a Hindi version in 1934. आज भी आप फूल तोड़ने आए हैं हाँ रामी 
मंदिर के आसपास बहुत से गरीब लोग रहते हैं ऐसे छोटे काम के लिए उन्हें आज्ञा कीजिए ये काम आपके लायक नहीं क्योंकि आप हिंदू जाति के शिरोमणि हैं ब्राह्मण हैं और आचार्य जी के बाद इस मंदिर के सबसे बड़े आदमी हैं रामी किसी का बड़े और किसी का छोटे घर में जन्म लेना ये मनुष्य की इच्छा और अधिकार में नहीं है बड़ा छोटा उच्च और नीच ये सब समाज के बनाए हुए शब्द हैं मगर मेरा विचार सबसे अलग है मैं ईश्वर को जगत पिता और जगत के प्राणियों को उसकी संतान समझता हूं एंड द नोबिलिटी ऑफ प्योर ह्यूमैनिज्म प्रिवेलिंग अपॉन द इविल्स ऑफ अनटचेबिलिटी वाज अ न्यू डेवलपमेंट ब्रॉट इनटू द न्यू आर्ट फॉर्म कॉल्ड द सिनेमा एंड ऑफ कोर्स द बायोस्कोप सत्य ठाकुर क्या ये सच है क्या ये सच हो सकता है बोलो मैं जानना चाहती हूं केवल मैं जानना चाहती हूं बोलो बोलो क्या तुम प्रायश्चित कर रहे हो बोलो बोलो चन्नी ठाकुर बोलो चन्नी ठाकुर 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 सिनेमा बिकेम फुल ऑफ न्यू आइडियाज न्यू इनोवेशन एंड न्यू एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एंड देर वॉज अज पब्लिक रिस्पॉन्स to what was then a new banner new theaters the man behind it birendranath sarkar birendranath never directed a film but he was the quintessential patriarch known universally as b n sarkar his great grandfather was pyari charan sarkar he was an educationist and grammarian his english primer is still a useful guide His grandson, Rupendranath Sarkar, was a leading lawyer whom the British singled out for special recognition. Sir N N Sarkar was actually the first Advocate General of Bengal inducted into the Viceroy's Council from 1934 to 1939. Birendranath Sarkar strayed away from the family tradition. But how did the young civil engineer brought up in the best traditions of Bengali aristocracy strain to the curious business of filmmaking we went to his son dilip sarkar to find out aha i was expecting this question because so many others have asked me the similar question it so happened this question is very natural so i asked my father one day as to why he had joined the cinema after he had come back from london as a very successful civil engineer you know my father mr b n sarkar had a tremendous sense of humor in reply he told me that in his civil engineering business he had the misfortune of seeing that his last bills were never paid so one day he was when he was driving along the then conwall street now called bidhan sarani he saw large queues of people standing in front of cinema houses i think those were those at that time belong to madan theaters who were the pioneers of the cinema business in this part of india and he saw this huge uh, queues of people buying tickets to see something of which they knew nothing so the product irrespective of the quality of the product this was some business where the people had to pay first so he naturally thought that this was the most wonderful business almost 70 years later the commercial equation survives people still pay first bn sarkar was among the first of a new class of producers 
The year was around 1928. The Bhavanipur Club was the meeting point of the young intelligentsia. The man who left the strongest impression on Virendranath's mind was a smart and smooth-talking impresario, Horan Ghosh. It led to a business partnership that met its first test in a silent film. The name of the particular film in Bengal is Buker Bojha. Translated into English, it would mean the heaviness of the heart. When the film was released, it literally turned out to be an heaviness on the heart. The disaster of Buker Bojha would have driven anyone away, but BN Sarkar never looked back. This time, it was PN Roy and Jyotindranath Mitro who helped him set up the international film craft in 1930. The new company began its journey with a silent film, Chor Kata, directed by Charu Roy, whose wife was perhaps the first educated woman to join films. Chashar May was made the same year by Praful Roy. Both were unmitigated disasters. BN Sarkar realized that times were changing and he had to change as well. That is, sing to the tune of the world's first talkie, the jazz singer, made in 1927. The year was 1931, a crucial year for cinema and for BN Sarkar. Adesh Irani's Alamara, the country's first talkie, had already been made with great success. BN Sarkar launched new theatres on 10th February 1931. Its maiden venture was Dena Pauna, Bengal's first sound film, directed by Primankur Atorthi and based on Sharad Chandra Chatterjee's best-selling novel. BN Sarkar had by then set up the Chitra cinema. Opened by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, it was the marketing centre for Sarkar's Bengali films, leaving new cinema opened by Sharad Chandra for the Hindi films. New cinema, 172 Dharamtala Street, became a landmark. Adjacent to it was the Bengali cinema's most proud establishment, the Office of New Theatres. But it was not all a bed of roses. Ours is a crisis-ridden path, he had once said. And the first major crisis was the fire of 1940. August 1940. My father was a great football fan and on one such occasion at that time he was in Mohan Bagan ground watching a very important football match between Mohan Bagan and perhaps Aryans, yes. A gentleman came and whispered something into his ears. He went out of the stands but didn't come back. It was later revealed that the message which was conveyed by the gentleman was that the new theatre was on fire. He just stood in front of the laboratory and watched the entire uh, effort of new theatres for one decade in the thirties, that is the negatives of so many important productions just going up in flames in front of him. People who had also watched my father at the time when Chondidash and Puran Bhagat were roaring successes and had helped new theatres back on its rails said that the expression at that time was exactly similar to what they saw when they saw Mr. B. N. Sarkar standing in front of the laboratory when his films were going up in flames. One crisis followed another in quick succession. The war broke out, resulting in a severe shortage of raw stock. 
The quota allowed to new theatres hardly sufficed to sustain a large establishment. The final blow came with the communal riots, the partition, the wave of killings and the virtual shutdown of cinema halls. It was the biggest test that new theatres had yet faced. It was only an establishment like new theatres that could hope to bounce back into the reckoning. And bounce back it did. The ideology, imagination and sheer power of tradition left their mark in Udoyar Pote, later remade in Hindi as Hamrahi. शबनम की मस्तानी आँखों के मोती मुँह दुटा के अमरित सा भूलूं रे अमरित सा भूलूं रे But trends in filmmaking were changing, slowly but surely. The rest of the country saw a distinct shift towards spectacular productions, lavish sets and costumes, opulent devices, everything that money could buy. The sheer size and scope of the blockbusters mattered more than their social and human relevance. It was a trend new theatres could not adapt to. B.N. Sarkar was still the patriarch and leader, but began to reveal himself in new directions. He was a member of the first Film Inquiry Committee, appointed by Jawaharlal Nehru and headed by S.K. Patil in 1951. The report of the Film Inquiry Committee paved the way for the Film and Television Institute, the Film Archive, Films Division and finally the Film Finance Corporation. First ever seminar on cinema held in post-independence India, where he is presiding, and which was graced by Nanels and the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, with the first President of India, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. His social connections went well beyond the domain of films. They brought him into contact with people as far apart as Rabindranath Tagore, the then Viceroy, and Mr. Satyamurthy, leader of the opposition. And soon he became a cultural ambassador of sorts and joined film delegations to America, China and several other countries of the world. He was also actively associated with the film societies. In 1966, we organized an Indian film festival, quite a big one, and at that time there was no Indian panorama or any festival of regional films as such. At that time, we approached Mr. Sarkar to be in the advisory board, which was formed at that time, and we organized several film shows at Academy of Fine Arts, and we organized a very big exhibition on the history of Indian cinema. For the exhibition in particular, we used to call on Mr. Sarkar, who was sitting at the time as a small office at the ground floor of New Cinema. He was coming every day in the morning and at the time he was wearing a British type of dress, you know, suited, booted. After, afterwards, uh, he gave up that dress and he was always wearing dhoti and uh, spotless uh, uh, Punjabi on all the official occasions. But at that time, he was, he was like that, you know, Pakka Englishman. And he was uh, smoking like a chimney. And he gave up smoking completely after, after some time, I think. And at that time, he not only consented to be in the advisory board, he volunteered to give us a lot of publicity materials like still photos, 
posters, booklets, etc., etc., and gave us access to a room which was at the new theatre studio number one, and thus we we, we became acquainted with each other. BN Sarkar's commitment to social and artistic values was reflected in the film he presented at the time blockbusters had flooded the scene. What he presented was a travelogue, a spiritual journey, a quest for truth. The film was Mahaprasthan and Pothe, later remade in Hindi as Yatrik. बद्रीनाथ के पास ले जाऊंगा उठो चलो भाई आओ द फिल्म डिपिक्टेड समथिंग ऑफ अ सर्च विद इन वन सेल्फ इन द स्पिरिचुअल एंबियंस ऑफ द हिमालयस इट कुड इवन हैव स्टूड एज अ मेटाफर फॉर द स्ट्रगल न्यू थिएटर्स एंड बीएन सरकार हैड टू सरवाइव in a changing climate yathrik only proved that tradition and class still had their relevance it was a roaring success and helped new theaters to carry on for at least a few more years but the moment of truth had to come sooner or later if the world of the cinema was changing rapidly it was not in the character of new theaters to compromise on its basic values and convictions it remained in business with its head held high till bokul in 1955 Bokul was made in 1955 a box office disaster and with that the story of new theaters finally came to an end Are Awaaz ki duniya ke dosto farz kijiye ke kisi ki khushi ki duniya barbaad ho chuki hai और जहां तक उसकी निगाह जाती हो उसे अंधेरे की निराशा और निराशा के अंधेरे के सिवा कोई चीज दिखाई न देती हो ऐसे वक्त में उसे क्या करना चाहिए करूं पूछे फिर से जल जाए रात अधेरी जाए दिन आए मिटती आस है जो तकियन की मिटती आस है जो तकियन की समझो गई तो गई करूं क्या आस मेरा सुख बढ़िया के 
रोक नहीं है कोई कहो ना आस मेरा तो भई कहो ना आस मेरा तो भई करना होगा खून को पानी देना होगी हर कुर्बानी कारण दी संगे जरा क्या कर चंद्र Yeah. 